Right. Hey, my name is Chef. Um, I am going to do a copy of Frazetta's Dark Kingdom. So let's paint Frazetta. Um, you want to find an image that has the best quality, the most uh, true color reproduction. Um, in this other example, it went, it looks like there, there's like too much um, cad yellow medium. And in this one, it looks like there's like, you know, elements of lemon yellow. So I'm going to go with this image as my reference. And be sure that when you do a study from the master copies, or, you know, at least artists who are better than you, be sure that you're copying the actual artist. Because not only do you have to deal with color reproduction that's off, but you also have other people who are riffing off of the same image. And you may or may not know whether you're copying from the actual piece. So my trick is to go into tools and pick large uh, when I'm doing image searches. Otherwise, you know, you, you get all kinds of um, variations and, you know, other people trying to do the same thing. Now, the whole point of this is just to gain mileage and just try to walk in Frank Frazetta's shoes, at least for, for a few minutes. So let's do that. Um, initially, I had started doing these as uh, demos for students so they could um, turn this these kinds of exercises as extra credit work. But um, those days are over because uh, I no longer teach at the Art Institute because it shut down. Um, I had uploaded this same thing, the same file previously on DLive, but DLive is also gone. So this time around, I'm recording it again, but I'm adding commentary and speeding up. So I'm just going to wing it and share my thoughts in kind of a free flow format and um, just see where it goes from here. All right. So let's hit it. Um, work large. Uh, try to um, get your piece going uh, as fast as you can you know dirty up the canvas as much as you can just get some color down there and just work in big shapes um, proceed from large to small now I like to go for the eyes right away because um, with the eyes you know immediately if you know you, you've got the likeness or not if you've got the feeling there or not because um, if, if you've blown it and it sucks and it's going to be a big fail, you know early on. So you could start over if it really goes wrong. And that's kind of the trick, you know, to recognize when your piece is going to fail before it does. Uh, the trick to not failing is to not allow, allow the idea of failure to enter your mind. So just have a mindset of being focused on something else and um, like, you know, time, speed, whatever, and just trust yourself that you'll have the quality that, that you can pull it off, that um, there's nothing stopping you from, you know, nailing the piece. Now, I realize I'm a little bit off from my version because I'm drawing. I, I like to draw at a size that I'm comfortable at. Ordinarily, if I was going to be really faithful to this, I'd shrink it down so I could get all the background elements because the composition is a little bit zoomed in. But I think it's more important to um, just nail the piece and do it comfortably and adjust it later. You know, um, when you're drawing from life, you know, that's when you, you nail it and make no mistakes. And that's your trick to, you know, getting a better piece. But when you're working digitally, you can just noodle you just noodle forever. And you need to get to a, a point where you can say, all right, you know, I'm good. Let's move on. And just treat it like a shopping list, you know, and get into the routine of drawing at that level of, you know, you, you have a process that you are so comfortable with that you can repeat that process all the time. Like when I go to the, when I go to the grocery store, um, I'll usually get the bigger items first 
um, like, you know, milk, you know, anything that takes up space in the shopping cart. And from there, I'll, I'll go to the different sections of the store because I like starting in the back. So in that sense, I like starting with eyes. So you can compare it, you know, as a similar process. Um, you can also think about ways of trying to get a feeling like get your get your mind into the emotional state of the character that you're trying to portray so that um, you can imbue that emotion into the piece like what's going on in this guy's head you know as he's breaking through um, this canyon you know, I'm, whether or not I actually know what the artist intended is less important than me coming up with my own narrative for how and why um, Frazetta made these decisions. Now, I don't know. I, I know this image was used for an album color, the cover for uh, Molly Hatchet. I don't know if uh, he created it specifically for Molly Hatchet or if Molly Hatchet saw it and decided to use it for their cover. But um, recognize that you can get away with a lot of stuff. You know, if you if you have the emotion, the the intent and kind of carry it through. So when you throw down that initial indication of where stuff goes, everything you put on top of it is like uh, frosting on a cake. Now, if your foundation is weak, like your cake is lopsided, it's going to fall over. But if your foundation is solid, then you can, you know, put put anything you want, and it and, and it'll just be solid. Um, you can see me adjusting with the marquee tool. Um, that's because I I'll draw something at a size that feels comfortable for me, and then I realize it's either too small or too big, and then I just readjust it. In general, when I do these studies, I try to work on only one layer because I don't want to. Um, get you know confused with too many layers i want to be able to paint over my mistakes rather than uh, control undo my mistakes so that all being said work in such a way that that it becomes routine to you um, so it becomes familiar so that when you do try to vary your routine vary your process um, you know you have a process that will successfully generate a piece for you um, that you can rely on. And, you know, you've got it in your back pocket and you pull it out anytime you want. But it'll help you if you get into such a way where you can break your process into different segments and then play with the order with which you um, do those things. Like right now, um, I started this piece with just shapes. You know, I didn't do any initial drawing. I didn't mark stuff off, which is why um, scale-wise it's a little bit off. But this is just me eyeballing it without without gridding it out. I'm just looking at the abstract shapes of, I mean, does that yellow look right? Um, do those um, wings on the helmet look right? And I'm just, you know, trying to trust my gut more and think less and just um, accept that I've put in enough mileage uh, drawing that I can um, I can play so my suggestion to you guys is do the same thing find some better artists than you do a copy and you're basically walking walking a mile in their shoes you know and that'll help you get a lot better all right so thumbs or subs if you want to see me keep doing these um, I have a bunch that I never got around to showing my students so I'll be posting them on YouTube so please like and subscribe all right thumbs or subs peace out